we go. Rutland 913 wind charger made by uh, Marlec. Free power from the wind. Living in a dehumidified garage. And uh, we'll come out here. There's a dehumidifier there, so it's been kept in the dry. And uh, it was for uh, a project, and project's been abandoned. I dabble with wind and batteries and inverters and stuff. You know, you can see there's an inverter there with the scrap one, and so. Uh, yeah, anemometer. Plenty of old wind junk, related junk. And uh, I digress, more, more uh, wind related junk. And uh, just having a general clear out, uh, more wind related junk. And uh, so you can see I'm a, a windologist, if you want, for want of a better word. Uh, enough for the preamble. And uh, here, here's a, a Chinese one which uh, went too fast, the blades ripped off, and uh, that cost me uh, 600 quid repairing a polytunnel that was trashed when that turbine blew up. So, uh, these things, this is not a cheap Chinese import, this is the proper deal. And uh, it was actually bought to replace this one, but the people were so nasty about the one that blew up that I had a bit of a falling out with them. So. Uh, they're a charity and I used to do things for them on a charity basis but the, they had a change of ownership and the new people who came in were, well, they just really not fit to be part of a charitable organisation. So I pulled the project, I'm now unemployed so I want to recover the money or as much of it as I can. It's uh, brand new, as I say, it's li lived in a dehumidified garage and uh, now significantly, although it was for a 12 volt project, I bought a 24 volt turbine because basically all it means is that it generates twice the voltage for any given wind speed. And uh, these things are designed for the ocean, so they're designed to operate at high wind speeds in very in high stress conditions. Uh, when you're operating in land, you often find that there just isn't enough wind to turn it fast enough for it to even start generating. If you look at this graph here, you can see the wind speed has to get up to uh, has to get up to five knots before the leaves start to do anything, and uh, that's about six miles an hour. But they they turn in virtually any wind. They turn very freely, but they need to be going at quite a rate before they actually start generating. If you put it into a 12 volt system, that cut in point goes further back, so you only need about two and a half three miles an hour of wind to get it to cut in. Now. The, the downside, of course, is you get less current. So a, a 24 a 24 volt uh, version, if that's the 12 volt graph, would put a line about there. Now, what would that be? Five or six amps? If that would be delightful, because really, you know, if you could get that amount of power in a strong wind, you know, that's really quite handy. You know, what I tend to find is the average wind speeds in wind la inland sites is down there somewhere. And that's where you want the graph to be coming up higher. So, if you live on the coast or in a windier area, it's fine for a 12 or 24 volt system. We'll spin at a slower speed, we'll produce less noise. They hardly produce any noise anyway. But if it's bolted to your cabin or your caravan or your narrow boat, you will hear the noise it makes. And... I've lived in a narrow boat, one of these things, it's quite a pleasant sound. Nonetheless, with the 12, with the 24 volt version running into 12 volt, you will get less noise, you get less vibration as it, if the wind is turbulent, which it tends to be on an inland site, and uh, it'll tend to run steadier as well. When you have very high blade speeds and turbulence, it tends to go whoosh and pitch out of wind like this. You watch videos of of uh, wind turbines on YouTube operating turbulent, they speed up and then they tip out wind and they slow down, they speed up. If you keep the blade speed down, I've noticed this with experience, I'm quite experienced with my wind turbines me, if you keep the speed down, you tend to get less tail swinging and pitching. Let me uh, take you out here, and I'll show you what I mean. There's a, sadly I've chosen to make the video on an absolutely windless day. 
Wait, you see that thing on the end of the house there? There's a scrap wind turbine tower there, which I'm, I've just dug out of the ground. There's something else I'm thinking about. You see that thing there? I've quite, I modified that to run at half speed because at the higher speed it would build up speed, it would get up the speed, and then it would swing out the wind and back again. So when you're working in turbulence, lower blade speed helps. Uh, running a 24 volt machine into a 24 foot 12 volt supply will give you that lower speed. If you, on the other hand, live in an area with good clean wind and you have a 20 volt volt system, obviously it'll work fine because the you'll get this carafe into 24 volts because it's uh, the manufacturers have set it up for 24 volts in uh, good quality wind area. They're uh, they are my favourite machine. But a lot of fiddling around with wind turbines. You can see there's a wind turbine thing here, and uh, that that belongs on that massive steel tower I've got dismantled outside. But that's a entirely different project altogether. Um, and uh, I say I'm having a clear out. There's more junk here. There's a uh, more wind turbine junk here, and more wind turbine junk there, and more wind turbine stuff there, and. Uh, battery discharge tester, 12 volt battery, so uh, as you say I've been doing this a little while, there's another generator in there, and uh, the, like you say I'm getting rid of this one because I'm unemployed, uh, and uh, just uh, offloading all the stuff, we're, we're actually going to clear the garage, and we're selling the house, so just a big clear out, this is a project, never got round to it, uh, we'll quite happily run it to 12 volts. You won't overload it or anything because the uh, the amount of torque, the the amount of load that the generator will see is determined by the blades, not by the current you put on it. Uh, the more current you pull, the lower voltage. It just runs slower. You you can't overload a wind turbine like that. There's no clever electronics in it. It is just the generator and the rectifier, and the rectifier obviously makes direct current to your battery, so you can connect it straight to your battery. Connected to a 12 volt battery, could even connect it to a 6 volt battery. Now, I think in inland speeds, turbulent, low level winds like you get on the canals and the inland waterways and in allotments, the 24 volt into 12 volt battery will work actually better than the standard 12 volt version, which has to run fast in very smooth wind to do its optimum because that's what it's designed for. It's designed for the uncluttered wind, uninterrupted, unturbulent wind you get on the oceans because it is effectively a yacht charger. Uh, inland, I think it will run very sweetly actually on the, the fact I know it will do because we had one of these on a narrow boat, a 12 volt one, and uh, I put some electronics on it so that it behaved like the 24 volt one, a, a, a voltage doubler, and uh, so it changed the shape of this graph, and that was very successful, and that's why when I went for another project I bought the 24 volt machine to save all that fiddling around. Um, that it's never been used. The box is immaculate. It's absolutely pristine. Just sat there gathering dust. And uh, I can't think of anything else to say at the moment. They obviously, it comes with its own pole mounting kit. Or you can put it on a scaffolding pole. I believe they fit a scaffolding pole. Yes, they do. Um, you can get aluminium scaffolding poles, actually. I've, I've got a few lying about somewhere. And uh, there's a... Uh, well, I was looking around my collection of bits of metal. I don't think I've got anything that'll fit. Um, other than the scaffolding pole, but there's a pole, they do a pole for it, nice stainless steel thing, if you've got a fancy yacht it goes on the back of it, or even your narrow boat. Um, that is a perfect inland machine, and it's uh, because the lower blade speed, generally with wind turbines, the lower the blade speed, the more t tolerant they are of turbulence. When you have high blade speed, you need absolutely clean air, otherwise the blades don't grip the air properly, they're operate, they, they, they run inefficiently. Uh, the other extreme are those old-fashioned water pumping windmills with lots and lots and lots and lots of blades are made out of sheet metal, the old Wild West type things, they're, they're the best for uh, really turbulent wind, but of course they operate at very low speed, uh, not really practical for generating, but fine for a water pump. We, uh, this would be an ideal compromise. The they do run very smoothly because of the what's called the uh, cordless alternator, and uh, but to that means it needs very strong magnets, which is why they're so expensive. And there you have it, the one super duper wind generator.